Hello everyone. Just wanted to get a little pan view of my office here. It's Kip from Kicker. Hanging out a little late tonight, getting some things wrapped up and done here at work. And one of those projects is I need to get an amplifier ready to ship out to our good friend, Big D, over at Wilson Audio Labs. He's decided he wants to test one of our specific amplifiers. But I'll show you where we're going, and I'll show you the amp we're getting for Big D. So come along. Let's go check it out. That's Roger's area right there. And what you're seeing here, this is just a bunch of cubicles up here. It's marketing and sales. It's where we create everything up here. R&D is on the whole floor underneath us. But I'm just going to walk through here because I've got to go back to the back of the building where I've got my stash. Here's a little uh, homage to all the big air bashes that we did for quite a few years. They did nine of those. You might find that cool as we walk by. And then there's, that's a picture of a whole bunch of kicker dealers and kicker reps and kicker employees. Huh, that's kind of cool. It's the kicker ping pong table. And yes, it's got a full audio system built into the ping pong table. That was with our friends over at, and I'm going to probably butcher, I think it's pronounced Stiga. Um, we actually got one of those put up here in the office. It's pretty cool. And of course, it's dark back there. It'll lighten up as we walk through here because the lights are automated. But we're heading to the back of the building. So let's go. It can tend to be a little spooky being in such a large building by yourself <laughs> and the lights are clicking on as you go. And ironically, here's the shipping line. This is where I'm going to bring the amplifier up to and leave a note on it, an SO number. It stands for shipping order number. And our guys here who have been putting in a lot of hard work will get that sent out. So we just walk through off a lot of warehouse where it's shipping, receiving, warranties, that section back there we walk through. And now we're back in uh, like tech and OE where they design all the factory fit systems and all the kicker show cars and things we do. This is where they design and build those along with other projects that they do here. Where we're going is right over here. Or maybe we'll grab that boat and we'll go right out on the lake. You big dummy! The Room of Wonders and Hidden Stuff. I've got some brand new master packs that have never been opened up. So I'm going to grab one of those and we're going to open it up and we're going to pick an amplifier to send out to Big D. So let me set my phone down here. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which one should I pick? Oh, let's take the top one because it's easier. That way I don't have to take more off. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. which one should I pick? I guess it will be you. I'm just trying to keep that selection as random as possible, but as you can see, I had two brand new master packs sitting here, which is fortunate for me. They're, these are actually amps that we set aside for another project, and we didn't end up needing them. And so, thankfully, we've got them because, as I saw, there's none in stock right now. So, there's the master packs. You can see there's the one I pulled and opened, took the band and the straps off. And here's the one that got randomly selected. And it is, as you can see, hopefully, it is going to be our four, KXA 2400.1. And I'm going to open it up and give you guys a look at the birth certificate that's on there. This is the one we're sending to uh, Big D. And this is the thing that just shows it passed the THD test, signal noise, protection circuit, and the power they got uh, at the assembly line, less than 1% THD. And then the KXA 2401. And for those that are curious, there's the serial number. So Big D can verify that's the one he gets on his end. And there's everything in there. It's all packed up, brand new, ready to go. The outside of the box, I'll give you another close up. So here it is, it is a kicker. KXA 2400.1 amplifier, and there is the serial number and the model tag and everything off of it. Okay, so here's our amp. Let's take it up to shipping. And here's just a little look at the install bay and the banners. They're hanging up there. No big deal. Pretty cool. We take the things we use to like mirror and seam of the big trade show events, and a lot of those things will end up coming back home and just getting put up for props on the wall. 
and we're gonna see, I've got the amp now. Let's walk on up here to shipping. That's actually a product that's sitting here on the outbound freight docks, getting ready to leave as soon as the trucks come and pick it up. So I'm gonna bring the amplifier over here and set it on the line. Okay, so there's our amp. Derek did tell me that he needs something to power it up with. So, I did order, hopefully it's here on the employee pallet. Let's see what we got here. Hey, there it is on the bottom. Let me grab this and we'll take it over to the assembly and I'll show you what else is going on with the amplifier. This is one of our PKD1. This is a one watt power and ground kit. It gives you enough wire to run back from the battery, back to the back. It's got a fuse distribution block. What you need to really hook up and power an amplifier as big as a 24.1. So let me set this over here. And so, there you have it. We have a KXA 2400.1 amplifier and a PKD1 amp wire kit all sitting here. I'll get a piece of paper and put the SO number on it and the guys in shipping will get that sent out first thing in the morning. So, lucky for us, we had a stash of these sitting around because right now we're plum sold out. So we got one sitting here, this in the wire kit, Heading out to you, Big D. Check it out. Let us know what you think. We look forward to seeing the results. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks to Kit for creating that segment and Kicker for sending the amp for us to test. Guys, check the video description. I've got links to some other really interesting videos. One is a history of Kicker. One is five-star car stereos uh, kind of walkthrough of Kicker that shows a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff. And I also did a video myself with Hi-Fi Vega about the Kicker World Headquarters. Those are all very impressive. Make sure you check the video description for those. And as you could guess, today we're going to talk about the KXA 2400.1. This currently, as of the time of this video, is Kicker's largest amplifier rated 2400 watts at 2 ohms or 1 ohm. It's $1,000, and right now they're kind of hard to come by. There's some dealers that have them in stock, but uh, we got them to send us one so we could check it out. Here's what you get in the box. We'll take out the different components. We'll check it out. Get the amplifier. You get a Bluetooth remote, which is really super cool. I'll show you later in the video how this pairs up. And it comes with a little trim ring as well. You get some additional accessories for mounting the Bluetooth remote. You get your certified birth sheet. And I don't know why I'm covering up the serial number because we're going to show that again. You get some mounting screws, and of course, you get the owner's manual. Here is the birth sheet, and you can verify those numbers. 232 are the last ones of the serial number. This is the one that they sent me. Now, on the top, uh, you know, there's a piece of tape that's covering up the logo. You can peel that off, and I'm like, well, hold on. That's not supposed to come off, but it actually is because, like some amplifiers, they don't know which way you're going to mount it. So there's double-sided tape on the back of the logo here, and you can turn it either way. It fits both ways. So that's a really slick and cool thing. Some manufacturers do that. Here's the design of the amp from the outside. You can see it's a slick design, very sharp looking. And you can see the power ground inputs. Those are one alt. Uh, the real nice thing, too, is it uses all the same size Allen key. That makes it very easy. There are RCA inputs and outputs. There's some auto turn-on adjustments for using the radio detection or not and on the far right side there's the speaker outputs those are eight gauge and again this is a mono block amplifier it has two positives and two negatives just to make it easier if you have multiple subwoofers or dual voice coil subwoofers now i know you're probably asking what about the gain control where is that at well if you turn the amplifier around there are two three millimeter allen bolts that you loosen up and they're captive too and this door will fold down you can see here the model number there's a protection light there's a usb port above that but it's for service only you're not supposed to use that there's the gain control which goes to 11 whoop, whoop. subsonic filter low pass crossover then there's the kick eq plus which has a center frequency a bandwidth a boost and then there's the kxarc pairing for pairing the remote control again we're going to show that later i'll show it after the dyno test show you how simple that is to do and again here's the look of the amp with the remote just a very cool slick looking design i'm a fan of the design already so can't wait to see how it does on the dyno let's talk about the dimensions 
as far as the length goes 15.5 inches or 394 millimeters by the width 8 and 5 16 or 210 millimeters and as far as the depth it is 2 and 1 8 inches or 55 millimeters as far as specs go 1200 watts by one at 4 ohms 2400 by one at 2 ohms or 2400 by one plus or minus 10 percent at 1 ohm mono We'll have to see what that means. Again, it has a 24 dB per octave low pass crossover, 40 hertz to 160 hertz variable. It also has a variable 24 dB per octave subsonic filter from 10 hertz to 80 hertz. Also has a 95 dB signal to noise ratio, which is very high. They recommend a 200 amp fuse or the PKD1 wiring kit from Kicker. And I'm gonna show you here when we get the amp all wired up and show you the power on there's a red LED that goes across the top it's hard to see here so I showed another version here so you can see the light yeah looks pretty slick all right now it's that time let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno find out what kind of real power this amp does four ohms first it's rated 1200 watts at 14.4 volts let's see what we get certified takes us up to 1% THD oh yes 1283 14.62, that's what Big D's talking about. Yeah boy! Yeah boy, meeting rated power. That's all we can ask for these days. <laughs> Don't lie to us, and Kicker is telling the truth. Let's try uncertified, which takes us up to clipping. You can see over 1300, we got 1335 at 13.96. So those are good numbers as well. Next up, we will try the dynamic burst. 40 hertz sends a pulse tone into the amplifier kind of test out to see what the dynamic capability amp is and right at 1340 watts actually 1339 at 14.11 very nice overall now let's check the efficiency at 4 ohms 81.4 percent very nice that's what we like to see next up let's try 2 ohms this is where the amp is rated 2400 watts 14.4 volts here we go, certified test first. Takes us up to 1% THD. Again, tester at 40 hertz. 2410 at 14.21. Now you guys remember the burst sheet I got? 2415. <laughs> We're only five watts away. That's impressive. So yeah, it's rated 2400 watts. Does just a little bit over it. So that's all we can ask for. Now uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, which it does get uh, almost 2,500 watts, 2,494 at 13.95. Then we're going to do the dynamic test. See the dynamic capability at 2 ohms. 40 hertz is the input. Yeah, there we go. Get over 2,500 watts. 2,561. Is it going to go up anymore? Nope. 2,561 at 14 volts. Very nice. Now check this out. Efficiency. 88.7%. Now it's probably closer to 80 because there is some, you know, differences in the, how this clamp meter works, but still, either way, it's super impressive. One ohm next. Amp is rated 2400 watts. Check this out. What? Almost 3500 watts. I was blown away. I actually wasn't sure based on them saying, you know, plus or minus 10% that it might actually do less at one ohm. Wow, was I completely shocked by that number. Now let's try uncertified, which takes us up to the clipping point. And again, my voltage is dropping quite a bit, but still 3,500 watts at 13.8. Holy moly. Unbelievable. I had no idea this amp was that powerful. All right, so dynamic. Let's check out the dynamic capability at 1 ohm. Look at this. 43.48. 4358 almost 4400 watts wow that's just crazy well the other thing too that's really crazy again is the efficiency look at this 84 percent efficient at one ohm it is the highest one ohm efficiency i've ever measured on an amp it's can you deal with that yeah i like to think kicker you know is kind of humble kind of like big d we we sit back and don't brag a lot, but wow, this amplifier's got a lot to brag about. 
you can pause it here if you want to see all the results i've already talked about all of them but overall super impressive wow i don't even know what to say it's amazing next up let's try to pair that bluetooth remote see what that's all about All right, so here's the remote, and you can pop this out. A little enclosure, you can see a battery tab here. We'll go ahead and pull that. That should enable the battery. Uh, you can already see the, saw the light come on there for a second. So let's do this, let's flip it over. There's a button on the bottom. We're gonna hit that so we can pair it. So now it's looking to pair, and then we'll do the amp. And there it is. Looks like we're paired. It's green. Go between gain, shock, phase, and clip. Oh, that's so cool. All right, we're gonna try out the Kicker KXA2400 on the Savard 8 inch high Q subs. These are wired at a one ohm load for the amp. So let's um, let's try a few songs, and we're also gonna adjust the level here with the cool Bluetooth remote, where you can adjust your bass level, do some other things, change your phase. You can give it some shock. Wow, or check out your clipping so we'll check that out as well all right first demo song three kinds of bass bass outlaws Let's see what we got here It's a big dummy just noticed that I rewired these a while back for four ohms. So I've got them wired in series instead of parallel. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to wire them in parallel real quick and we're going to try some more tests. All right, now I have them wired down in parallel. You can see 1.4 ohms nominal. Let's see how they bump now. All right, let's try a little woofer test. I love you too. So the answer to the question, yes, it bumps. <laughs> Here is the FLIR attachment for my iPhone, and we'll check out the external. Like 111 or so is about the uh, hottest we see for the external. Now we open the amplifier up. We can see these chokes here on the output. Look at this, 137, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But the rest of it's kind of cool. The transformer here. It's uh, 127, I think, is as high as that got. Again, these are Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Sorry for you guys outside the U.S. We use Fahrenheit here. I know we're weird like that. But a uh, very cool look at the amp here using the thermal camera. It's really neat to see which components really get hot. 
and uh, yeah, I just like that. So here is the amplifier with the bottom cover taken off. This is a unique bespoke design created in-house by Kicker, and you will not see another amplifier like this. Very, very cool the way they have everything laid out. They have uh, a lot of 105 degrees Celsius filter caps. They have this board here with the DSP built in for the input switching. They have 2200 microfarad 80 volt caps for the rails. The, again, these are 105 degree Yuskons. The other caps are 35 volts, also 2200 microfarads. But yeah, if you notice on the right side, there's a huge aluminum block to help keep the power supply transistors cool. Here's the verification. This is the amp they sent me, the same serial number. Now we're going to talk about the good stuff. Rated power and 1 ohm insanity. Wow, who knew it did so much power. Love the unique design, the Bluetooth remote. Super useful. You can pair up to four different amps to control them. 24 dB per octave crossover and subsonic filter. Efficiency is through the roof. Want some of the highest I've ever measured. Kicker quality goes without saying. They cost a little more for a reason. Speaking of that, the price, yeah, it's a thousand bucks, but the Rockford 2500 is 1600. So it's actually not that bad. I'm not a big fan of the angle power and ground. I wish it had Tiffany RCAs. Give us some VU meters, please. I want to see some VUs. It is made in China. That is the way the current market is, unfortunately. I'm sure Kicker would make these in the USA if they could, if there was a financial way to do it. Who knows what the future may bring, though. Maybe they will bring stuff like this back to the U.S. Hot off the presses, Wilson Audio Labs merch. Make sure you check the video description below. Pick you up something. Keep you warm. Keep you excited. Well, there is my test of the Kicker KXA 2400.1. Again, this was sent to me by Kicker, but I was not paid. They haven't reviewed this video. This is all my thoughts. It is a great amplifier. There's no way to hide behind that. There's nothing else really that we can say other than what I've said. So again, thanks to all my supporters. Check me out at patreon.com slash old school stereo. Special thanks, Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, Big D. I'm out of here. All right, I'm going to show you the wires here on the kicker amp, the 2400.1 at one ohm dynamic burst. Watch this. <laughs> some current my friends and just so you can see the numbers 4427 at 14 and a half volts dynamic burst one ohm this amp is a freaking monster hidden who knew <laughs> i sure didn't